Dem. Where are we going? Dem. 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 North. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. Therapeutic benefit in role-playing games. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. Oh yeah, baby. Your presence requested in exchange for treasures. Dem. Dem. Red River. Are we talking with one treasure each? I'll count that hard. Welcome back to Deacons and Dragons. Last time we were in surgery, uh, major surgery. Dr. Biff got involved with Stony. They had words. The chaplain got involved. Uh, he's helped them out. He, uh, he burned the surgeon Woody for being an old man, which everybody got a nice chuckle out of. Uh, but we're moving on to the, we're leaving the, the patient who is on the verge of death to change the scene to the Lieutenant Colonel's office uh, where Major Hale uh, has come with the military police to address the issue of Lieutenant Stoney's accusation of treason. Take it away, Major. Uh, so, sir, uh, we've received word that there might be a spy in our midst. Uh, care to fill us in on how this happened, what we know? I mean, he's in the middle of surgery right now. We, we could lose many young men if we don't have this extra pair of hands. Hmm. The, the paperwork that obviously, you know, when a new member joins my mash, uh, they have paperwork. And this is the first time that I've seen in recent memory of the paperwork showing that the man arriving was already killed in action. You know, the paperwork, while we have issues internally, you know, with diagnoses and, and whatnot, but transfer papers uh, are typically accurate. And I trust uh, the, the order of, you know, Masterson and Ward. So I've, I've been advised uh, that the new recruit is potentially a spy because using a dead man's identity would certainly be the way to infiltrate. I mean, sir, that seems like a jump. I mean, I, I may be a medical doctor, but I'm an educated man. I, there could be numbers of reasons why someone might falsify the paper. None of them good. I'll agree with you. I mean, the gentleman's unsavory, uh, and he's not terribly good at his job, I don't think. But, uh, you know, who knows what trouble this person is in? I mean, we have a Russian in this complex, a Russian surgeon who we're trusting to not be a spy. Quite frankly, sir, if a spy is worth his grain of salt, wouldn't they be able to falsify paperwork? I mean, that's a pretty glaring blind spot for a spy, right? To pick somebody killed in action and, and to do this? Uh, you know, I will support you, sir. I'm a big believer in the chain of duty, but I mean, something doesn't smell right about this. I mean, and certainly during surgery, I mean, we let him finish surgery. We can lock him up. We'll do a quick investigation, talk to Bill, talk to Masterson, and we will, and, and you know, no harm, no foul, but we can't drag this guy. These, these two knuckleheads were going into our operating area with not even scrubbed up. They, they could have infected any number of, of gentlemen being helped there. Uh, because of these sorts of actions. I'm just concerned, I guess, sir. Hmm. Your concerns are noted, and I do take the advice of uh, the, the rest of the staff, as I typically sit here in my golden throne uh, until people come to me. I uh, rarely oversee the actions personally. Uh, <laughs> um, no, all kidding aside. No, I, I take very seriously the advice of, you know, especially the chief of medicine. You know, I... I, uh, I think that your your words are sound. Uh, I also think that you're probably correct. I I wasn't there. I can't speak to what I saw. So I'm going to take your word for it that these two barging in was unnecessary and uh, not done properly. So you know, next time, he, so he looks at the two. You know, he says uh, to um, military police. So he says to, to Hans and he says to Mob, uh, you know, the two of you, the next time that you decide that you're going to uh, arrest somebody who's in the hospital, you know, make sure that you are properly sanitized. Um, and, you know, that's, we're trying to save lives here, you know, and, you know, arresting people may save lives in a different way, but certainly uh, saving the lives of the people who are actively wounded you know, is they're the most critical. Um, so unless you're arresting somebody who is holding a weapon to somebody, you know, next time, that's, that's what it takes. 
So if somebody's holding a weapon in the, the operating room, certainly go in and take them down. But, uh, you know, contact, you know, that's why we have the, the chief nurse. You know, she very easily could have advised you on, on how to enter the room and removing Stony in a different way. Uh, so good work, Major. Um, Thank you, sir. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, see to it that something is done with the paperwork. Uh, this, you're right. There's, there's probably a mishap, and if it wasn't a mishap, then certainly there is a spy in our midst, and they're the ones, uh, whoever falsified the document is the spy. So I think that you're, you're right in pursuing Masterson and Duard as the, the next two in the chain of command here. Thank you, sir. I've always appreciated your prudence. Uh, us, us folk who cut our chops in World War II, uh, you know, we go about things the right way, and I've always appreciated that about you. Mm. <laughs> he, he nods approvingly uh, and wholeheartedly agrees with you. Um, with this, we're going to add another segment to both of the clocks. Actually, I'm sorry. Let's add a segment just to Aqua. Let's leave Zephyr at two. Okay. Aqua goes to what? So Aqua will now move to three. Uh, Zephyr will stay at two. Okay, so having cleared that up, I will return to uh, return to the hospital, re-scrub up, and inform everyone of where we stand, and then offer my assistance once more. Okay, and ultimately you're commanding the military police to go to the paperwork, or you will just address that later? I will most likely address that myself as soon as we get these people out of, as soon as we handle this incoming wave, um, then, then I will handle it myself. Um, but if not, I, I might reach back out to them if we get another wave or something like that. So um, I'll ask them to keep close while we're in this wave in case I need them, but otherwise... Um, uh, I will handle it. All right. Awesome. Okay. Just want to double check something else. Okay. So Ethan, where we oh yeah, right. You were doing the, the perpetual sit rep. That's right. Right. Okay. So with the return of uh, Major Hale, let's, uh, let's have you make that sit rep check now. Okay. So I'm rolling two, and then how, what do I add for that? So it's, it is an eyeball check. So on, do you have your, um, your sheet? It's skill. Right, I it. it's eyeball skill, skill. yeah. Um, I have it actually printed out in front of me because I don't have a whole lot of room um, or monitor room. Um, what page is it? It's all right. So you're rolling, you're rolling plus skill. Okay. The, the sit rep was you get to ask an additional question as okay. your like special ability. So I rolled a six. Um, Off a natural six? No, two, two die, five and a one. Okay. So on a six, you miss, you hold none, you take nothing forward, but can ask one question immediately. I still, I'll let you ask two questions, but I may answer with lies or half truths. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what I should ask. Um, Off the top of my head, I'm not sure what I should ask. Uh, <laughs> You've been eyeballing this place for quite some time. That's one right. question should be related to the cleanliness, I think. You know what? That's right. So I am in a, yeah, like, so why is this place kind of looking so, so like drab and, and dirty? Mm. So you, you, you've been looking around for a while. You've, you've noticed that the, like the trash cans are, are full, that like things that have been used 
aren't properly disposed of and are like present, like they should be gone, that they've been used now. So just like used uh, medical utensils are still around. Uh, and you know that there is a unit who's in charge of sanitization, and that is the, the chemical unit. This is common knowledge. Okay. Uh, and so the chemical unit oversees the sanitization of the entire mash base, and they also are in charge of covering the base with smoke should there be any sort of attacks and they need to move. Okay. So that's their, what they're there for. Uh, and there are four of them. Okay. I'm going to say that you actually are rather friendly with one of them. Uh, let's say that it is. So you're friendly with uh, Lee Dubgale uh, because he is actually really good at smuggling in odds and ends. Um, so you have, he's very popular. Like he's a, he's a, he's a man's man. Uh, and he, where he gets people like their extra pack of cigarettes or like, you know, the, the access to, uh, I'm going to just say magazines, uh, you know, things like that. He's able to get very easily. So he's very popular. Um, okay. so of like the four of the team, you're, you know him. We'll say that you have a, a plus one history with him. Okay. Um, and then my second question. Um, hmm. I guess. <laughs> kind of revolves around the spy, but I'm not really sure how to frame it. Um, so, well, so what's your, what are you thinking? Um, so, okay, what do we know about the spy again? Just, I'm sorry. So what you know at this point about the spy was that two military police barged in to remove him. Yep. You then overheard uh, them say that the paperwork had, right. um, when they were explaining to Major Hale that the paperwork had said that he was already killed in action. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you as like a driver, like, you know, that this is like transfer papers. Don't say that. Um, and you also talked with Yvonne, uh, toots, uh, that he's conveniently bunking up with the Russian surgeon. Right. Okay. Um, so I guess, yeah. Um, Is the is it a coincidence that he's bunking up with the Russian surgeon? I'm going to say that you are leaning toward no. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> Um, so I guess then with that information, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do next. The, and with the inf- all the information I just gave you, mark another segment on Aqua. Okay. So that's four total on Aqua now? Yep. Okay. So you, do you have uh, anything you'd like to do from there now that you've kind of you've um, given this, this real good sit rep look? Uh, you've determined um, uh, the state of medical utensils at the hospital and other people seem to have not noticed what you've noticed. So I do want to go, I'm going to go over to um, Major, Major Hale and what it was, he's still in the middle of surgery. I I'm going to say you could get him like he's going into like the scrub room. You've already been here checking things out. So I'd okay. say you could like intercept him before he goes into the OR. And, and just ask. Okay. So I'm going to do that and just ask him like, you know, um, I'm like looking around. This place doesn't look like it's nearly as uh, up to snuff a, a cleanly cleanliness as it, as it normally is. What, what I'm a, infections, things like that. Is that a concern? Uh, yes, certainly current, uh, 
constantly and currently we are always concerned about infections. I just had to get two uh, greasy MPs out of here uh, in a rather hurry for that exact same reason. Uh, all I can tell you, uh, Warrant Officer Berglund, is that this is a war zone. So I'm afraid if we're not up to your standards of cleanliness, uh, now might not be the time. Uh, understandable. Understandable. Yeah. Um, all right. Carry on. I'm just going to I'm just going to kind of like stand back in the corner and continue to watch and observe. Yeah. And, and with him saying this, like you do look around and it is it's not like horrendous, but it is certainly like worse than usual now that he's pointed it out. And like you start to see like like that shouldn't be there. That shouldn't be there as you were after like talking to him. So like by talking to him, you have gained the information that things are out of place that should be disposed of. Uh, and then you are able to go and scrub up. So returning to oversee this, this final uh, surgery with this, this man, uh, you see that he's, you return to find him disfigured uh, and he's, his uh, abdomen is closed up. Uh, his face is closed up, his chest is open, uh, and you see that there has been extensive damage here. Like, this is real bad. Uh, but the ribs uh, that were posing an issue to the organs have been purposefully, uh, you know, broken and removed uh, as to not cause any immediate danger. Uh, but he's still like, you, you see like the shoddy transfusion uh, and you see that uh, like Biff and Stoney both like were in a heated argument um, as you are here for like the, the final portion of if this man's going to survive or not. So I'm just going to come, uh, you know, up and, you know, uh, I will address... Uh, Major Gramer, uh, well, it looks like your uh, your new Wunderkind is uh, not as good as we were led to believe. Uh, at least I found out that he's hopefully not a spy, but uh, we'll at least get through the surgery. Uh, do you want to ask him maybe to go somewhere easier and me and you will uh, tag team this guy like we used to back in the day and see if we can get him through this? Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Yeah, let's, let's move Stoney aside here and uh, let's get this done right. Nice. Let's turn to Stoney. Listen, kid, I vouched for you. And now I come back to this mess. Just remember, we're a team, okay? Everyone here is looking out for each other, even though you've been nothing but a royal pain since step one. We're here for you, and we actually may know what's best for you. Just may remember, be. royalty is important. God save the queen. Now go <laughs> help someone. Um, so... Uh, your friend Valentine there calls you over to his table. Uh, Stony, I uh, yes, comrade. I, I could use assist in finishing up. And uh, Valentine has had the highest turnover of all the casualties. He's he's already gone through three himself, and he's now finishing his fourth uh, and the tenth of all of the casualties, which is the final one. Uh, and you coming over and just like eyeballing this guy it's like superficial stuff like you see that this this guy is like not in any danger and he's just asking you to do like some work on the arms uh so before we do that let's uh let's have major hail uh and major dreamer make their checks to save uh this man here so you want me to roll in a, an assist move to his yes. treatment. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's. I'm pulling open the uh, the names right on my phone yeah. here. I'm not I'm not checking things. So we're gonna say that this is. Let's give a name to him in case he dies. So it's like that much worse. Yeah. This is a. Uh, ben White. Ben White's life is on the line here. Ben White's life is on the line. I got a net seven, uh, but I get a plus three bonus to skills. So I got a 10, Boom. Uh, which gives me a hold two, and I can spend my holds one for one to take plus one forward on this patient or eliminate any one consequence that results from the surgeon's treat move. Boom. So that is fantastic news as he rolled an eight and would have had a consequence 
that you can now just get on out of here. <laughs> so the two of you come in uh, and you now back up, uh, you know, pushing Stoney aside and you patch this, this guy up. Uh, you manage to stabilize him, uh, get a stable blood pressure. Um, the, the IV is going fine. Uh, you get him a little more comfortable and you turn him over to the post-op with instructions though. Like you want, you definitely want people doing the more basic first aid ongoing to this man. Uh, but his life is saved. Ben White is in the clear, though he is disfigured. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, so he's being moved on. He's 100% Biff's fault. <laughs> so you, so the two of, so both Biff and, and Hale were, would know, like, all right, we just like patched this guy up. Great. Like we tag teamed it. Like you, you saw that, that Biff may have been like on the verge of making a mistake that you corrected and you did it perfectly uh, and are moving him on. So you have that knowledge and Stoney who's working on uh, Josh Jordan's arms over there uh, looks over and he calls out that it was Biff's fault that the man's disfigured. <laughs> Great. Now I kind of hope you are a spy kid because nothing would get, make me happier than to lock you up. <laughs> No, no, no. Stoney, no spy. He's best friend. Oh, best friends with the Russian. Okay. Look, I, all of uh, our casualties here are in perfect condition. You're the best of what you do. Not going to lie about that. Somebody who's cocky but can actually back it up. What a surprise. <laughs> Don't worry, Stoney. Soon we will both be cocky and back it up. <laughs> So uh, the so the casualties are now all moved into the the post op area. Uh, the the various nurses are doing their continuous aid uh, for post surgery to continue to work on things. Uh, both Valentine and Stony manage to patch up this guy's arms. He's good to go as well. Like everything uh, is all set. Like this guy is going to come out of here stick and span as. Uh, Warrant Officer Ethan is going to say. Uh, so once everything's tied up, I will now take this opportunity to first check out uh, the supply area as Warrant Officer Bergwin suggested. Uh, and, and I will do an eyeball to see what I can see about that situation. Okay, excellent. Uh, so, you, uh, so right away, you do see that like there are certainly supplies missing, uh, but you just cleared 10 people, so... Uh, yeah. but, but it's good that you look, you'll need to restock them. Uh, so make your eyeball check. Uh, and I'll give you a bonus plus one. Uh, I'll say that this is a forward gifted by warrant officer Ethan's, uh, information. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then I will actually get a 14. That's a very good roll. <laughs> I mean, not the time to get a nat 10, but, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> better, than, better than failing. Uh, so that allows you. So you have a whole two, first and foremost. Okay. And you can ask me. So you can spend these holds to ask me questions from the list. Yes. So let me just make sure I got it. Okay. Uh, so uh, one of the questions that's listed here is what should I look for? Okay. So I'm going to so, go with the answer of what should I look for? So what you should look for is uh, how sanitary the area is. Okay. Okay. And then I will ask the question, how can I help the situation? Uh, so you, so how you, you can help is, I mean, you could begin to disinfect the area personally, uh, or certainly ask other people to do it, but there is, you know, that the chemical core is in charge of this and looking around as well, uh, you see that none of them are present and they should be at least one okay. should be here, like attempting to disinfect things. Uh, but you do, you see like 
all sorts of used instruments that are just kind of hanging out. Um, and the, uh, the area certainly needs sanitization. Okay, so I will then call over a couple of nurses and say, listen, you know, I know you guys have had a, a tough go. You've been helping all along, but the chemical core has gone missing. Uh, would you guys be willing to clean this up? And when I go uh, wrap some skulls together over them, I'll get them to make it up to you. Okay, so uh, so talking to the the specific surgical nurses. Yeah. Uh, so you, there's uh, Bryn, Bryn Hayes. Uh, she's double braided, uh, mid 40s, and is extremely kind. Uh, so she like right away yeah. like volunteers uh, to to do so. Um, and the other one is uh, Meryl Blanco. Uh, she's from the deep south and used to work the farm delivering animals. Uh, so she also knows, um, you know, a thing or two about uh, biology and cleaning up, you know, the farmhouse and everything. So, you know, she volunteers as well. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so I'll add that to my list, um, but my next stop is going to be a stop by radiology, which should be nearby. Uh, I just checked to make sure that, uh, what's his name? I had it Cash. Down. Cash. Cash Hermanson. Make sure Cash Hermanson got his, uh, his radiology done. Okay. So you know that the doctor, uh, the radiologist is David McKinnon. Uh, he's, he's the sole radiologist. So like appointments are based on just him. Um, but he's got darker brown hair, freckles, um, average size guy, and he loves soccer or football. Uh, so you walk in, you see David, um, and he's going over some pictures and he turns to look to you and you ask about cash. And he says, uh, Oh, no, I, uh, I saw that there was a, uh, cash, uh, Hermanson, on my schedule, but uh, never showed up. Oh, these young kids, I swear to God, they can't follow a simple instruction. Not like we made them back in the day, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Oh, jeez. Uh, listen, uh, how busy are you right now? So you, <laughs> so you see him just kind of with like a few papers and like you look down, like you know the results to these things. And regardless of what he says, like you know that he's not actually busy. So like yeah. when asking that question, you know that? I mean, I got a you know thing or two to do, but you know, I guess I got some time. I appreciate you doing the favor. I actually got a couple of young MP gentlemen I'm going to use to just go nab this guy and bring him to you right now. If they bring him to you right now, can you just run through the test real quick? Oh wow! Is does he have like a bomb inside of him or something? That's getting the military police. That sounds extreme. Well, I'm not going to send them. I'm not going to discharge him as official MPs. I'm just going to use them as hired hands, and maybe scare this kid a little bit into actually making sure he gets his shit done. Uh, you know, oh, so, yeah. you know, just, just a little bit of, just you know, scare, scare the new guys, teach him a little bit like we had to learn the hard way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm just going to go have him grab him and bring him here and make sure it gets done. He's got a persistent sickness, so I don't think it's anything. I think it's actually fatigue and maybe depression, but uh, with these situations, you never know. Uh, so I just want to make sure we check off that list. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure this happens on the double and get them to you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I'll be waiting. Awesome. So as discussed, I'm going to go grab my two MP liaisons, tell them not to scare the kid too much, but tell them they got to go get this, uh, this cash kid and bring them over to the radiology place. And, uh, and then they can just, you know, once he's in the radiology place, they're just, uh, dismissed at that point but if they can do that favor for me i will forget i will personally forget uh they're barging into my uh operation room this this morning okay so you so you'll make your way over to the guard posts where the military police are uh and you'll express all of that ask about the favor and so then from there they they agree like okay we'll we'll do this you know scare them a little bit uh just Based on your forgiveness. Yeah, that would be, yeah exactly right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so while that's ongoing, um, we have uh, Stoney just like washing up post post surgery with the other surgeons. Uh, the chaplain is you know just hanging out, watching them scrub up and clean up. Uh, Dak is like tapping his foot. Uh, he's he's not happy that he's just sitting around outside the operating room while the chaplain just chills inside. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to go uh, relieve Dak of his boredom. That sounded awkward and weird, but I didn't mean it like that. So. <laughs> um, so, so you go. So you're going to tell Dak to just kind of like he's dismissed for the day. Yeah, I'm just going to tell him. I'm, I'm going to say that it's been, uh, you know, it's been, been a very stressful day, young Dak. And uh, what we're going to have to do is walk around. And just see what people need. A lot of needs here, Dak. Needs that come above yours, okay? So that's what we're going to have to do, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Tell him, dude. <laughs> uh, yep, yep, yep. You're the boss. You know. Yep. Got your message from God. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll obey. Uh, so again, like, he's he talks this way, but he does listen to, like, everything you tell him to do. So, so you're going to leave the OR to then begin walking around, seeing what people need. Yeah. Just to kind of see what, what needs are. Cause I'm assuming I've like, you know, obviously I've seen the, the NP, the police come in. Um, you know, I, I sense there's a lot of tension around, right? Like, so uh, particularly with all the, the wounded people coming back. So I'm going to walk around and just kind of see how people are doing. So, so you'll walk around the hospital and like, yeah, yeah, oh, just okay. like the general area, like that kind of thing. See how people are doing. Okay, so you also, so you, you're going to overhear everything that you know Major Hale's doing. Then, yeah, um, yeah. So you're just in the hallways, like while he's like, you know, expressing his things, looking around, and requesting that the the nurses start cleaning up. Um, so you'll go back to the post op area where there's, you know, the nurses are very hard at work at you know patching up. Uh, you know, like wrapping ankles, wrists, elbows, uh, getting like, you know, splints, casts, um, you know, pain meds, certainly. Um, there were not a lot of pain meds administered in that OR, <laughs> uh, for better or worse. Um, so there's certainly a lot of people writhing in pain now as yeah, so, just starting to receive them. So I'm, I'm looking at... Um... I don't know. I imagine him kind of like, I, I don't know, like, like the, almost like a stereotype of a kind of old school country, like the voice I'm doing and everything. So imagine him watching the nurses, right? And as a kind of joke, he just says, uh, um, he's like, oh, all that work is making me hungry. Make me want to get a cheeseburger. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, the work you do. If I did that, I'd be, uh, <laughs> This is excellent. It's definitely raising the morale of the soldiers. <laughs> um, and they start chiming in with equally sexist jokes. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, here we go. Like the objectification of the nurses, like, <laughs> uh, no, this is seriously. Um, uh, yeah, no, that's good. Like they're, they're like chiming in about like also like being hungry, um, especially the ones where the pain meds are kicking in. Uh, they're definitely, you know, feeling, uh, feeling what you're putting down. Um, so, so I'm, I'm going to talk to, we're going to talk to the nurses. I'll talk to the soldiers, you know, um, and, uh, you know, I'll just kind of use, um, the, the clown clown points, whatever to kind of like get people up. Yeah, for sure. Like it's, yeah, you're, yeah. I think you're effectively doing so. Um, <laughs> And as a reminder, too, you have pictures of uh, dudes butts, uh, courtesy of Father Tim pranking you. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll just go. You, got, you guys have probably heard about my uh, ongoing feud with the good, uh, the good father over in the other camp over there. Uh, see, you see this butt? You see this butt? He sent me this butt. He sent me this butt. We're going to have to get him back, guys. We're going to have to get him back. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I could eat something. Call it a puree. Spit it out. Send it to him. What do you guys think of that? So one of the nurses in particular is also a prankster uh, and is and loves like the rivalry you have. Um, and that is uh, here we go. Uh, Amelia Vasquez. Uh, she is herself like very stealthy uh so she like pulls off a lot of her pranks like by sneaking like directly into like people's quarters and getting out and just like leaving things and that's kind of like her mo um 
certainly, you know, she's, she's like wasted money on, uh, you know, things that smell bad or she's gone out of her way to like collect like stink bugs, uh, to, to leave in like people's quarters. Uh, so she's on board with, uh, and she comes like right over. It's like, Oh, like, yeah, we definitely got to get father Tim back. Um, I, I guess like, what if we delivered something like in a, in a bucket that like was, but it was like something that they needed, but inside the bucket that's hidden, you like leave something, something that shouldn't be there. Oh, you're a naughty one. I like this. Let's, uh, let's plan something together. I like that idea. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put our hands together. We'll put all heads together, you know, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get him back. Good old Tim. Yeah, that's right. I mean, like, yeah, what, what do they need in buckets? I mean, oh, we don't want to mess with the water. You know, like that's, that's a little too extreme. I no, we don't want to give them dysentery. That's a little too much, a little too much. So <laughs> it is, that's, that's too much. What about, uh, ooh, paint? Like if we give, they need to like paint something. Uh, but oh. go, ahead, go ahead. I got it. So, so we, we buy a paint bucket. Okay. They probably have to do a lot of paint jobs over there. We dump out the paint and we fill it with red jello mold. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love this. Let's do it. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll say, you know, like, well, we'll make sure that father Tim knows somehow, cause this is going to go to their motor pool. I think like when they go to paint their vehicles, they're going to end up slapping jello <laughs> on onto their vehicles. Uh, so we'll make sure it's the one that Tim gets escorted around in. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like the cut of your jib, my friend. And so like with the two of you playing and everything, like the, everybody is kind of just generally listening and they're, they're becoming like distracted by this like ongoing feud and like the plan and like pretty much everybody thinks it's going to be funny that like they're going to end up slapping jello onto this, like the sides of their jeeps and stuff. So, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna say so you guys you, you want to know how this started okay so so Tim and I were in seminary <laughs> we're in seminary together okay we took a class took a class together it was run by this very very intense professor okay so I come in and and this guy's a no nonsense guy okay so I come in I sit down and he put a whoopee cushion under my chair so the guy the guy I come in I'm a little late and he says <laughs> he says did you do the homework there Donnie. And I sit down, and then this noise comes out. Like I was flatulent. <laughs> and that's how it started. I had to get him back. We've gone back and forth. <laughs> wow. So that must be going on for like a decade or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, a decade. That's it. That's, that's amazing. We should get whoopee cushions. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Anything to liven it up around this place. It's a little dreary at times, but you know, I do my part. I do my part. So then you hear like seconds later, one of the nurses goes to sit down and you just hear. <laughs> and in fact, there was a whoopee cushion and you see Amelia like turn to you and wink. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I got you, father. I got you. Oh, I like this one. I like this one. <laughs> So uh, have, take a plus one history with Amelia. So you're bonding over your, your pranking here. Okay, uh, and, and if with Father Tim as well, you have a plus three history there. You have an extensive father, uh, history with Father Tim as well, should you ever come across him. All okay. right. Where did we leave uh, Ethan? So I was, uh, last I knew, I was standing in a corner still watching all the chaos and hubbub. Okay. Oh, sorry. So you have observed everything that's just happened. Yes. All right. So any reactions first? I'll just ask you if you want to do anything based on all of that. Um, hmm. Right now, no. I'm going to just continue observing. Okay. And you like also heard, like, overheard, you know, uh, Major Hale uh, talking about, like, using the military police to bring in cash. That's true. I did for an appointment that you dismissed him for. Right. Um, yeah. Um, and you also heard about the pranks 
and you're good at acquiring things. I am good at acquiring things. So you also know about the missing chemical team. <laughs> that's true. There's a lot. <laughs> like, you know a lot of stuff. You've just been eyeballing everything. <laughs> been eyeballing everything. Um, okay. So I guess cash is probably going to be my first priority, considering he's uh, under my like under my command, um, mm -hmm. under me. So did the military? The military police did leave to go pick up to go grab him, though, right? So we'll, we'll say that you're you have the opportunity to do something, but effectively the major Hale is leaving the hospital to go make that deal with them. And they're like going to listen to him. Okay. Um, I'm going to go along and just go along for the ride again. Uh, see what, uh, see what happens. Okay. So you, so you leave the, the hospital tent. Um, you, you run over to the guard post and you, you hear mid conversation about Major Hale forgiving them for their earlier trespass uh, if in exchange they scare, scare Cash into getting this test done. And they're agreeing to it. Right. Like, as you like enter the guard post. Yeah. Like I'm in, I'm in kind of like agreement with what's going on. I just kind of want to like make sure everything's going all right. He's going to be okay and all that. Okay. Yeah. And you, and again, from your history, like you know that he's just constantly trying to get out of his duties. Right. Right. So yeah, I'm just gonna follow along and come with them. You're gonna okay. So you're gonna go with the military police from here. Well, and with I thought you said uh, Dr. Hale was going too. He's at the guard post, but going to, but not going to the motor pool. Okay, then I will. If it's, if, yeah. if I do see him, I would offer him to come with me because I have to thank him for pointing things out. If I see him or if he's so far off that I don't see him. You'll see, yeah, you'll see him. He'll like, Twitter. yeah, he'll be, he'll become within five feet of you. So we'll offer for him to come with me and then it's up to him. Yeah. All right. So you'll go with major Hale then. Yeah, I'll go with him. Yeah. That, that, okay. That's, that's what I, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then before we go back to that, let's go back to Stony, who's been cleaning up and he's also witnessed, uh, that the, the nurses have begun sanitizing things, though you don't really know exactly like how things go here. Um, you know, like this particular unit, like they began talking about the chemical team. Um, and, but for all you know, like standard practice is to have like th these nurses clean up here. Right. Uh, you also hear uh, the chaplain beginning to plan his pranks back against uh, Father Tim. Um, and, your best friend, Valentine, uh, is scrubbing up with you and he is like patting you on the back, like all smiles, like great first day, comrade. Yeah, yeah, great, great first, first day. And I just keep cleaning up and, uh, and, uh, just head, head back to the, uh, back to my tent, I guess. <laughs> all right. Uh, Try so, to get rid of some of the stress I got over the last couple of scenes. All right. That sounds good. We are going to progress Aqua one more segment. So that should be at five. Um, it is evening at this point. Uh, everybody, so all the surgery tables are cleared. They're all in post-op. Uh, evening is here. The, the military police are on their way to scare up Cash, who's at the motor pool. Uh, the chaplain is uh, finding ways to prepare his jello paint mold and is going to be exploring that. And warrant officer uh, Ethan Berglund is with Major Jonah Hale. And that's probably been about 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to to end with the the four of them all pursuing that with the the knowledge that the chemical team is missing, um, and the nurses are covering that. But all the surgery is done. Welcome to Stevens and Dragons.